Who does it go now on guys? Talk Norris here back for another video and um, it's certainly never boring following Norris City is it? Hull City 4, Norris City 3 um, and that sounds crazy enough just by the scoreline but <laughs> the actual game itself had everything. Um, four penalties, that was the first time four penalties have been awarded in a, uh, a game in the top four tiers of English football since Manchester City versus Tottenham on October the 18th, 2014. James Madison got a first half hat-trick. That was, uh, he became the first ever player to score a hat-trick in the first half of an away game for Norwich City ever. Um, yeah, just absolutely unbelievable. Hull City take the lead um, and they should have probably been 3-4-0 up. They had a lot of really good chances and they just didn't take them chances and that probably shows why they are in the table um, for a reason. Um, they've scored a lot of goals at home this season. Only Wolves have scored more. So that proves that they've got goal scoring in them and they also can concede a fair few goals. And we certainly witnessed that today. Unfortunately, we were on the wrong side of that. Um, and then James Madison pops up and scores a hat-trick. I think he's only one of three players to score a hat-trick in the past five seasons. The other one being Gary Hooper versus Blackpool. Um, that was 2015. And then Nelson Oliveira was it against Derby last season. Norwich City players don't often score hat tricks, and James Madison continued his amazing season with a with a hat trick in I think it was 21 minutes. Two of them, admittedly, were from the penalty spot, but he just looks so cool from the penalty spot. We've seen missed penalties from Nelson Oliveira this season. Um, you always feel like James Madison is going to step up and score. It's always that little stuttered run up and bangs it into the back of the net with real conviction. 3-1, Hull get a penalty, the third of the game to make it 3-2. Abel Hernandez back from a long-term injury. He scored against Millwall on Tuesday and conti continued scoring today. He tucked it in for 3-2. And then the strangest decision of the whole game came in the 47th minute when the strangest penalty I think I've ever seen given. No one went down, no one appealed, and the referees just pointed to the spot for apparently... Tete pulling someone from a free kick. Well, I've watched it back about 15 times and I'm yet to see why the referee's given it. Um, so that's the fourth penalty of the match and Hull took that away to make it 3-3 three, three. and then there's chances for both teams and eventually Hull score the winner in about the 80th minute to make it 4-3. And it was so unlike Norwich City today because at least that the only positive we've really had to hold on to this season is we've looked so good defensively. And that system's changed slightly in the past couple of weeks. Yes, we've had two clean sheets in a row at home, but we've certainly looked sketchy at times. And with no Zimmerman today, we had to go to a flat back four and we never really looked that good. Close and Hanley were being cut open at, uh, at multiple times. The midfield weren't really providing it much protection. Um, and the wing backs didn't have their best game either. Jamal Lewis giving away a penalty and also contributing foul throws to the equation how professional footballers don't know how to take a throw in is still beyond me. And Harrison Reed probably didn't have his best game in an Norwich City shirt. Um, but yeah, I, I, th I think the system is partly to blame. My question to Daniel Farker would be, yes, Zimmerman is out and that's not ideal, but you've got a plate, you've got a player in there and Sean Raggett who is clearly good enough in my opinion. Daniel Farker clearly doesn't think so, but even if he's not up to the standard of Christoph Zimmerman, at least you can keep the system the same. Um, however, if you bring a ragged in, that then means you have to take away a little bit of width. We went for Marley Watkins and, and Onel Hernandez today. I think that decision probably was, was the right one. I don't think Murphy's had the best um, couple of games and he hasn't had the best season, just one assist from him all year. Um, or season, I should say. Hernandez, once again, looked, looked dangerous. And, and Watkins, is there something there left in a Norwich City shirt? I'm not so sure, but he contributed a little bit today. Nelson, uh, good to see him back in the team. I think that was the right decision. So the actual team selection going forwards, I don't think was too bad, but I'm still slightly questioning why we've switched that system up when we've got options to keep with that back three slash back five. I think we look better with that however you play that you lose your width we don't look as good going forward so it's a it's a real catch 22 but look that now means we've we're six league games without a win um that's was five draws in a row before today and that also means we've now picked up just two points from bolton nottingham forest and hull all teams below us in the league and it's been the story of our season hasn't it we've picked up really good wins at middlesbrough reading away sheffield united bristol city Yes, they've all been small margins, but they've been fairly professional performances. However, at home and in these types of games away at Hull and, and other games away from home where we really should be putting something on the, on, on the table, 
we haven't done it and that's why we are in the that's why we are where we are in in the table because we just haven't been convincing in the games we really should be winning now what is that down to i'm not so sure um yes we've struggled to score goals but we didn't struggle to score goals today and We've somehow come away losing the game 4-3 and you almost have to laugh because look there's nothing riding on these games anymore except for kind of pride and finishing above Ipswich if anyone cares about that um, but we, we need to try and find a system that works for us because I'm yet to see a convincing performance at home this season there have been a few really good performances away from home but you need that consistency and Yes, we've had consistency in terms of drawing games, but we need to be winning games. And you do look at this season and think, well, if we would have strung a few get wins at home this season and, and beat even just a couple of teams away from home that we should be doing, we'd be right up there challenging for the top six. This league, I've said it all year and I said it all of last year, this league is incredibly average. Um, I am yet to see a team except for Wolves. Um, there's been maybe a couple of games where I've been like, yeah, we really deserve to lose that. And yeah, they're a very good team. Um, but except for that, there's not many good teams in this league. And like, I'm not discrediting anyone else because that shows where we are as a club. Um, but look, it, it was a very odd game and, and it was probably um, very much an anomaly in, in, in our season. Um, and I don't think things will continue in that fashion. And sometimes you often come up with a game where you just look at it and go, what on earth happened there? The referee was very odd, um, penalties all over the shop, defensive lapses, um, both from Hull and Norwich City. You look at that Madison second goal, um, the defence are all over the shop, the keeper should have saved it. There we go. Um, positives to take, well, we scored some goals, that's always nice. Um, yeah, I think that's probably about it. We scored some penalties, which is always nice to see. Um, but defensively, we looked object. Um, hopefully, we could maybe bounce back on, on Tuesday night. As I said, there's not really much to play for left this season, which is never much fun when you're only the first week in March. But there we go. It is what it is. Um, lots of work to be done. I hate to think what James Madison is thinking at the moment after he scored a hat-trick and still walk away without a win. We'll do very well to keep hold of him. But... As Paddy Davitt said on Twitter, it should be £30 million minimum because that man is going to go to the very top of this game. Just everything about him just oozes class, doesn't it? Um, let me know your thoughts on that crazy game down in the comment section below. Hit subscribe. The TNC podcast is returning on Monday and hopefully we've got some really big guests lined up going forwards as well. So it's worth a subscribe for that alone. Thanks very much for watching. Have a lovely Saturday evening. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.